Super Mario Odyssey's new Balloon Hunt mode was released a couple of days ago and I had a blast playing it. Finding balloons in well hidden places and hiding balloons as fast as possible is much more fun than I imagined it to be. But this new game mode also raises a question that has been haunting me forever since I popped Luigi's tutorial balloon. What is the objectively best way to hide a balloon? At first glance, this question seems to be really easy to answer. Find a good hiding spot and then execute the path to this point perfectly. And voila, you created a tricky balloon finding challenge. Well, turns out things are more complicated than this. Actually, a lot more complicated. In this video, I want to explain in detail how the balloon minigame works and what we can learn from this in order to hide the most challenging balloons possible. Oh, and we aren't using glitches. I find hiding balloons out of bounds really silly, but that's a topic for a different day. So what is the best way to hide a balloon glitchless? You ready? Let's do this. Okay, so first things first, if we really want to hide the perfect balloon, then the hiding spot is basically irrelevant, but the time people have to pop it is really important. While there are some really cool and creative hiding spots in the game, especially when using captures or destructible terrain, the really challenging balloons are those where there is almost not enough time to get to them. This leads to a couple of things. First, getting to our hiding spot as fast as possible is obviously important, but second, the route we take is much more important than the execution of the movement. If we find a really cool route to a certain point and this route is really hard to figure out, then we are able to hide a balloon that can't be popped when using the obvious route. A couple of examples. It is possible to hide a balloon here in Bowser's Kingdom by doing a really tricky series of Cappy Tricks, which is about 3 seconds faster than taking the intended route and makes this balloon really hard to pop. Another example is on top of this roof in the Metro Kingdom. The obvious way up here is by this electric wire, but because of Cappy's insane sequence break abilities, it is possible to get up there by using the um, swing pole thingy, which is significantly faster than the electric pole. And as a last example, in Bowser's Kingdom, it is possible to dive into this water pond from the side, which allows us to hide a balloon underwater way faster than by diving down there. Balloons that are hidden after taking a really creative route are some of the most challenging to hide and some of the most fun to pop in my opinion, since a huge part of the challenge is to find the ideal route. The attacker always has a benefit, while the hider needs to stand on the spot of the balloon the attacker is able to throw Cappy towards it in order to pop it, which is faster than actually standing on the spot. So in order to make our balloon as hard as possible, we should take that into account and place the balloons in a way that Cappy can't reach them, like at the bottom of water or around a corner. Okay, so hide a balloon in the corner and move there as fast as possible. And the balloon is really hard to pop, right? Well, sadly no. So here's the thing. The more I played the balloon challenge, the more a suspicion grew inside of me that the time we have as attackers is higher than the time it took us to hide it as defenders. Sadly, there is no easy way to play our own balloons in order to find this out, so I did the only reasonable thing in this situation and got myself a second switch with Odyssey in order to test this. So I hit balloons at every possible second of the minigame and then replayed them on another switch in order to recreate the way the time is measured. This may sound really tedious, and really tedious it was, but it also made me realize another hard truth about the balloon minigame. This may sound like a conspiracy theory, but I'm about 90% certain that Luigi doesn't care how good you hit a balloon. He'll always tell you that you hit it in a great spot. Why is he doing this? This is no excellent hiding place. Anyway, so after a couple of hours I had this chart that shows how much time we get as attacker depending on how much time it took us to hide the balloons. And yes, Nintendo rigs these numbers. A lot actually. For example, if we hide a balloon really well, close to the start, and it only takes us 3 seconds, then the attacker gets 6 seconds time to pop it. That's the doubled amount of time. If it took all 30 seconds to hide it, then the time becomes 40 seconds, which are 10 more seconds. That trivializes every challenge. 15 seconds become 21, 10 seconds 15, 20 seconds 27, and so on. You can find a link to this table in the description. By the way, I was unable to recreate the mathematical formula that reliably calculates the old time into the new one. To me these numbers seem to be hard coded, but if anyone is able to find a formula that transforms the times correctly, that would be awesome. So anyway, the game is rigged into the attacker's favor. Let's take the Bowser puddle example from before. If we execute this jump really well, we are able to place the 
this balloon in 7 seconds, but every attacker gets 11 seconds to pop it, which makes this balloon so much easier to pop. It's still challenging, but jumping in from the side is no longer required, which was the whole point of the balloon. I really dislike that Nintendo decided to do this this way. This makes placing really challenging balloons almost impossible. But luckily, there is one last trick that still allows us to place hard balloons. The coin seconds that are added to the timer. Coin seconds work in a really strange way and figuring this out took me forever. But here is what happens. The game determines the time the attacker gets by the time left on the timer. So if we place a balloon here in Seaside, then getting there in a standard way takes about 10 seconds. Here is where things become interesting. If we take a small detour and run through these coin circles, then it takes us about 11 seconds to get to this point, which is slower. But we got 6 coin seconds by running through those circles, which means that there are now 25 seconds left on the timer. The game now calculates the attacker's time based on the missing seconds, which means it thinks it took us 5 seconds to get to the spot and gives the attacker only 9 seconds to get there. If we execute this perfectly, we are able to get there with 26 seconds left on the timer, which would mean the attacker only gets 7 seconds to reach this spot. So if the attacker now wants to pop this balloon, he or she needs to recreate the exact coin route we used in order to get there, because by just running towards this spot, he or she won't be able to get it. So I know what at least someone of you is now thinking. But see, if, wait a second, doesn't this mean that it is possible to create impossible to reach balloons by placing a balloon on top of a huge coin pile so that the time given to get to this point is lower than the time required to get to this point? Well no, Nintendo figured this out and coins are, as far as my testing shows, calculated in a different way. Coin seconds only count negative towards the attack time if they were used. Or to say it in a more understandable way, our time is always the lowest time the timer reached, not the time left on the timer. Here for example the timer reached 18, but then we picked up coins which pumped it back up to 23. If we now drop the balloon here, the attack time will be calculated as if it took us 12 seconds, which means the attacker gets 17 seconds. Seconds time. If we run, however, for 4 more seconds into a direction, the game will still give the attacker 17 seconds, because the lowest time the timer reached is still the same, we were just running on coin seconds. If we were able to keep the lowest time the timer reaches really low, but permanently running on coins, it is possible to create crazy challenging balloons. I'm really glad that I finally figured out how this works. It's honestly been haunting me for the last couple of days. I had so many different theories on how the times are calculated, it almost drove me mad. Anyway, so what is the best way to hide a balloon in Super Mario Odyssey? Well, it is to create a really complex coin route, where Mario runs further and further, but uses coin time instead of actual time. If we, for example, find a setup where it is possible to reach a really, really far away place, but still have 30 seconds on the timer, then the attacker would be challenged to reach this spot with only 3 starting seconds, and he or she then needs to recreate the exact coin route we ran up to this point. I look into cool routes over the next couple of days. If someone of you hides a really cool balloon, feel free to leave me a balloon ID, I'll pop many of them over the next couple of days. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, and maybe you feel especially 10 seconds or 15 seconds, as long as we didn't pick up 5 coins, because then there are actually 9 seconds today, and want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope that you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!